thanks for coming back for another episode. Uh, today is going to be a little bit different. And honestly, a lot of the time we are a very, very family friendly podcast. Um, and we're going to not like veer off into total debauchery here this <laughs> evening. But what we are going to do is talk about The Handmaid's Tale. And if you're familiar at all at all with that uh, material, then you know that it's kind of hard to talk about it in any in any way without veering into some very very uh, dark and disturbing territory. <laughs> so if if you happen to be in the habit of listening to this podcast with children or like grandparents around. This might not be the episode where you want to share that with other people who are of sensitive sensibilities. So <laughs> with that having been said, um, I am very pleased to introduce my co-host for this episode, Marilette Sanchez. Uh, she works with Campus Crusade, or I guess now we call it Crew it's way cooler and 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 uh, hip and and whatever. Now it's crew, and she works with crew in New York. And uh, she's a blogger. And I guess I guess the more proper order is, is it not? This first you are a you you've been married to your husband for what six years? You told me yes, six years. Yep, and you're a mother of four. I am <laughs> four little ones. And and you work with crew. That's correct. Awesome. Okay, well tell us just a little bit a little bit about yourself and and the kind of the kind of uh geeky things that you're into. This is how I like to sort of introduce all my co-hosts as we talk a little bit about what got them into um geek culture and where they sort of land on the spectrum of of geek culture now and what your what your specialty would would be. So, as I understand from you, you're sort of more you're sort of more you're you're more into pop culture that occasionally veers into geeky geeky territory. Is that right? That you got it co completely right. <laughs> I'm a lot more interested in pop culture, but I really do love comic book. Like when once they turn into movies, I'm very interested because I feel like um, you know as a Christian and as a you know ministry, being in ministry, it's kind of an easy place to get into spiritual conversations once you get into superhero movies and comics because. You know, definitely. You, you would know, you know, anything to do with superpowers, it just has an easy parallel to spiritual things. So that's kind of my interest in it. And I think just in recent years, um, you know, how you got to know me was through my review of the Wonder Woman um, film through a Christian perspective. Um, but I think just recently becoming a mom, being married, and just seeing the mix of opinions that movies have about women, just I feel like recently comic book. Or just movies, comics who would that have turned into movies have been way more. Um, I don't know. Women are. I guess it could go both ways, but Marvel movies and you know this new Wonder Woman movie have done a good job of portraying women as not just you know the femme fatale uh, person with a revenge, you know, re a vengeful um, backstory. Like it's just it's kind of improving to be a little bit more biblical. Mm -hmm. Not always completely, but I've definitely been pleasantly surprised with. Um, the portrayal of women in the recent comic movies. Obviously, like there's a big push in our culture for that to be the case, right? It's it's uh, sort of way more way more hip, and and you have to you kind of have to do that at this point, or else you're like a misogynist, like awful person, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> so, what is what would you say is your what was your earliest like entry point? into into geek culture i honestly think when just the marvel movies i don't know i i feel like i'm mm -hmm. struggling to even define geek culture like i'm that ignorant like i don't know what would fall into that Does well harry potter fall into that like i don't know yeah well harry potter definitely would fall into that I think, okay i think we would we would loosely define it as anything that has to do with well, and, and and sometimes it's hard too because like you can basically be a geek about almost anything, and and I've talked about this on the show before actually that like so what we call a geek at this point is basically anybody who takes their interest in a thing beyond the level of what would normally 
be there for like just a casual hobby and they've sort of made themselves an expert in this area because they are really into it. It sort of resonates with them on a very deep level. And so like you can be a, you could be a film geek or you could be a comic book geek or you could be a geek about like, um, like automobiles, like a, like a car geek. I think probably most of the time we call them like motorheads. I think is is sort of more the 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 popular parlance uh for for that particular brand of 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 person but um yeah okay so yeah I, I mean if we were to define it like that I'm definitely like a pop culture geek like anything that would be of interest to current high school students I feel like being in youth ministry I'm always kind of keeping a pulse of what they're into so pop mm-hmm. music so Taylor Swift Justin Bieber, Selena Gomez, sure. all those people. Most people would be surprised at the things that I know about them. I just watch interviews and read everything they say on their social media. So that would be right. like my my definition. But I mean, yeah, I think just when there was like the Marvel movies started coming out, you know, in the traditional uh, definition of geek, that would be where my interest started okay. coming. Yep. So w- what was the first Marvel movie that you actually saw in theaters? In theaters, it might have been, I don't remember the order of all them, but I watched Captain America, I watched, um, Avengers was pretty new, I probably watched Thor okay. and Iron Man, but yeah, mixing uh-huh. up. Okay, well, if you saw movies, the first but... Iron Man, then obviously that was the very okay. first yeah. uh, movie in the MCU uh, series, so then that one came out in 2008, so, and you would have, and you're... You're not a lot younger than me, but you're some younger than me. So you would have still been, you would have been what in your like very early, oh no, you might not even have been in your 20s when Iron Man came out, huh? Yeah, probably not. <laughs> yeah, okay. I was right. Yeah, in college. Well, yeah, I was in college. So probably, you know, right in college. So. Okay. Yep. All Maybe. right, and we won't yeah. we won't actually talk we won't we won't talk specifically about your age because I know that's not something that's <laughs> polite to do. So yeah, I don't mind. Yeah, I may I may be a geek, but I'm not like a total hopeless social like <laughs> barbarian. Uh, you're fine. Yeah. All right, so um, let's go ahead, and we're just gonna let's just go ahead and dive right in here uh, to the Handmaid's Tale. Um, for those of you that don't know about this thing. So The Handmaid's Tale is a novel that was written by Margaret Atwood. And it's set in a the fictional country of Gilead, which is essentially what is left of the United States after a radical religious sect has, like, overthrown the government Um Basically, women are the property of the state. Um, there are environmental disasters that have caused, like, the birth rate to plummet. And so uh, now any uh, fertile woman uh, basically is, like, forced into sexual servitude to the leaders of Gilead so that they can try to like continue to have children because it's like a worldwide crisis and like basically every part of their former life is like forbidden for them to talk or even think about. They are not allowed to use their own names and they don't even have like a, a name that they get to like consistently have. They're referred to by the name of the person that they are essentially owned by and so every every handmaid um in the story is just referred to as of you know the name of the the person that they they're owned by like of henry or of of stephen and the main character is named offred of fred um and so it's it's very very uh disturbing and it's very it seems on the surface to be very very critical of christianity in particular and that was the main reason why i wanted to kind of you know get into this a little bit because um 
this is this is the kind of thing in particular that I think most most Christians and not even necessarily like really really you know conservative Christians uh, would just sort of dismiss out of hand and see it as an example of oh the culture hates us like they just think we're terrible and uh, they would just dismiss it out of hand and not look at this uh, with a critical eye and see what this actually what this actually is saying about uh, Christian faith, what the author thinks about it, what the what the story is trying to to say, in fact. And I think these are things that are that are worth talking about. And even though it is very, very difficult to engage with this material um, just from just as like on a basic human level, because these characters uh, are, are dealt with in such a dehumanizing way. Um, it's worthwhile, I think, to engage with this stuff so that we can understand what is there for us to learn uh, from this story. Um, uh, Marilette, what, what, I haven't been talking for a long time here, and uh, why don't you go ahead and 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 give me give me some of your thoughts, um, and let's let's uh, let's try and tease out some of the some of the things that are going on uh, in this story here. Okay, um, I mean, I think as a woman, <laughs> it was hard to watch, and as a Christian, it was hard to watch. Um, obviously, a lot of verses were taken out of context. But I feel like as I kept watching, I kind of binge watched, I feel like over a week, maybe two, but which is a lot because mm-hmm. as you said, it's very heavy stuff. But I think, um, you know, I had, I feel like God had already been working in my heart of just thinking about how do we treat women in Christian culture? I feel like that was already a question in my mind, just being in youth ministry and seeing how a lot of young women who grow up in the church, they find, they just have like, they're enamored by feminism, like the worldly definition of feminism and I was like, what, mm-hmm. what drives them to that, you know? And, and then it, I just started having like an open eye to a little bit of, I'm not saying Christ, true Christianity is patriarchal, but in Christian culture, American Christian culture, there are certain aspects that can tend to be tra- patriarchal. And so I feel like even before I watched the show, I was kind of opening my eyes to certain things. And um, I mean, for example, just how sometimes we treat single women in the church is kind of like, oh, you're not yet married. Therefore, sure. you're kind of less than the married woman. And in The Handmaid's Tale, you kind of see that, you know, through absurdity. But the wife gets a bigger status than the handmaid, obviously. So, you know, as a right. wife, you still kind of you're not a full citizen as in, you know, the the main um, the wife of Fred. She has some status, but definitely less status than when she was writing home books and different things. Um, I'm not right. sure how many, how many spoilers I should give, but like you still see that, um, yeah, there's certain, it mirrors life in certain ways. Sometimes in, even in a church, sometimes the, the pastor's wife gets a little more say than the single woman. And I, it just, yeah, sure. even before I watched the show, I was like, this is not fair. And then I watched the show and I'm like, yep, that's not that absurd. So, um, there's that. And then I think, um, yeah, just this whole, I feel, I feel like in the show, they sometimes they refer to the handmaids as walking, the walking womb. And, you know, just I grew up in American Christian culture and I've heard it a million times. Like you're kind of like your your purpose kind of begins when you get married and start having children. And sometimes when people don't always applaud women who go for careers. And again, I feel like where I stand on that is everybody has a different calling and you kind of have to search, you know, you got kind of have to ask God, what is your um, role and your calling? Um, And neither is better than the other, you know, worldly feminism would definitely not want to, you know, moms kind of have a lower status than career women. Um, Mm -hmm. But yeah, in the, in the show, you just, it just, in, in little ways, it mirrors some of our tendencies, not in the true biblical way, but in how sometimes American Christianity portrays our values. So, Again, you have more value if you're married, you have more value if you have kids, and sometimes we forget about other women who maybe can't have kids or they're, you know, they're mm-hmm. not called to be married. Nothing's 